Hey everybody, welcome to today's lesson. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about molecular polarity, not to be confused with bond polarity. Um, I am going to warn you this is a little bit of a lengthy lesson, so if you can, um, try your best to just sit tight and, and hang through the whole thing. The beginning is going to be a little bit of review from yesterday's lesson, um, and then we're going to dig into some new stuff. So really quickly, I just want to start off just by going again over bond polarity one more time. So I want to start that off by first drawing out three molecules and labeling our dipole moments if they're, um, if they're applicable, if there is a dipole moment. So the first molecule I want to look at is water. So again, remember, water structure is actually going to become very important to us um, in this discussion of molecule polarity. And the way that we draw water is very important. Remember that oxygen fills its electrons in this way, one, two, three, the first two pair, three, four, five clockwise, followed by the sixth below number three, which leaves only the bonding position of four and five for those hydrogens to attach. Okay, so that's our water molecule. CO2 I went over in class today, um, but again, remember that C is going to bond a total of four times. Each oxygen bonds twice. That results in two double bonds, okay, between the C's and the O's. And each oxygen starts with two lone pairs, position one, two, and position three, six are our lone pairs. So we need two lone pairs on each oxygen at the end. And so we have one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And our last molecule is just F2. F is from group 17, which means it bonds only one time. That makes drawing our, our structure very easy. So we have F and we have F, and then each lone pair has, or each F started with three lone pairs. So each F needs to end with three lone pairs. One, two, three, one, two, and three. Now, in terms of dipoles, that term dipole, right, is going to really represent that idea of the partial positive and partial negative charges that are formed if there is an unequal sharing of electrons between two atoms. Our partial positive charge is always assigned to the lower electronegativity, and our partial negative is always assigned to the greater electronegativity. Again, reason being that if you have a stronger attraction to the electrons, then you're holding on to those electrons just a little bit tighter uh, than the other atom, which results in that partial negative charge because electrons are negative. So I want to go through and label my dipoles on each of these atoms. But before I do that, I do want to go through and just talk quickly again about how we figure out the electronegativity, which is on reference table S. So H has an electronegativity of 2.2. .2. O has an electronegativity of 3.4. Okay, C has an electronegativity of 2.6. O has an electronegativity of 3.4. And then F has an electronegativity of 4.0. Okay, so looking at our answers here, again, our higher electronegativity is assigned our partial positive, or I'm sorry, our partial negative, and our lower electronegativity is our partial positive. So on H2O, the more electronegative atom, the oxygen, is assigned the partial negative on each bond. So my H is my partial positive, and my O is my partial negative. My H is the partial positive, and my O is a partial negative. On carbon dioxide, okay, on the carbon dioxide, um, our O is the more electronegative element, so it's assigned a partial negative whereas our C is assigned a partial positive. And again, our O is assigned a partial negative, while the C is assigned a partial positive. And then last but not least, taking a look at F, these two have the same electronegativity values, which results in the fact that there would be no dipole present, okay? Because they share electrons equally, no pole is created. So, what does this mean then, or what does it mean if I say a bond is polar or nonpolar? So again, let's just take some time to quickly just, again, discuss polar versus nonpolar bonds. So a polar bond is going to be a bond in which the electrons are shared unequally. 
okay? And we see this in values that have different electronegativities. And again, these result in those dipole moments. So these bonds in this molecule are polar, and the bonds in the CO2 are polar, okay? Uh, a nonpolar bond, though, okay, nonpolar bonds are going to be bonds in which the electrons are shared equally. And that means that they have to have the same electronegativity values. And so of our bonds above, our F2 is considered a nonpolar bond. Now, I don't know if you guys have ever noticed this, um, and, and we're going to use this to kind of explain today's lesson about molecule polarity, not bond polarity. But in our unit where we discussed mixtures, we talked about the difference between homogeneous and heterogeneous mixtures. Um, and there are two great examples, or, or I provided three on this sheet really, but three mixtures that I can think of at home that are um, good examples of both homogeneous and heterogeneous that I want to use for today's lesson. So I always remember being fascinated as a child when I would bake with my mom that the water and oil, when we try to mix them together, don't mix. They separate into two distinctive layers, making them a um, heterogeneous mixture, okay, or where we can see the distinctive layers, okay. Um, an example of a homogeneous mixture is isopropyl alcohol. So this is your rubbing alcohol that you're going to find in your bathroom usually. Um, it was actually almost nearly impossible to find during the pandemic. Um, but this isopropyl alcohol, if you've ever looked closely at it, it says something like 70% or 91% um, isopropyl alcohol on the front. And the reason it's considered 70 or 91% is because it's mixed with water. And if you look at it really, really closely, you'll notice that you can't see the distinctive layers between them and that the water and the alcohol mix together. So. My question then becomes, why is it that some substances mix together? Why is it some liquids mix together, but other liquids do not mix together? And in order to talk about this, I want to look a little bit deeper at just a couple of examples. Um, and I want to start with, again, water. So I'm going to just redraw the water structure just a little bit bigger here. Okay. So here we have our water structure. Again, very important to keep our shape this way, and you'll see why in just a couple of moments, okay? But I want to know from looking at this structure, is there an equal or unequal distribution of charge? Now, I'm not talking only about the distribution of electrons, but about the overall charge. And so how would I figure that out? Well, again, I think it's also important to label our dipoles here to really take a look at where all of our charge is lying. So going back to the concept of the dipole, remember that when we are using the dipole, we are looking at um, our, where the electrons are lying. So our more electronegative element holds those electrons just a little bit tighter. So water, if we look at those that dipole moment has a partial negative here and a partial negative here and a partial positive on the h on the outside so looking at this overall distribution of charge is this an equal distribution of charge and right off the bat you should note that not only do all of our electrons lie to this one side but our partial negatives all lie to the same side as well. And so we have this resounding negative charge lying to one side of the atom, while we have this kind of resounding positive charge lying to the other side. So this is what we call an unequal distribution of charge. And when we have this resounding unequal distribution of charge across the molecule, we call this a polar molecule, okay? So by definition, a polar molecule, okay, so this is a definition term, so definitely make sure to get this into your notes. 
So our polar molecule is a molecule with an unequal distribution of charge. Okay? And so our water, it has not only polar bonds, but it's actually considered a polar molecule because as a result of that, we see that all of the negative kind of lies to one half of the molecule and all of the positive lies to the other half of the molecule. So let's now take a look at something that is considered a nonpolar molecule, which is going to be carbon dioxide. Okay, so I want to go ahead and draw a CO2 structure a little bit bigger down here. So again, we have our C, it double bonds to two O's. And we have our lone pairs on our O's, okay? We also need to go back in and label our dipole moments, okay? So let's go ahead and sketch those in here. So our dipole moments here, our O is the more electronegative, so it receives the partial negative, and our C has the partial positive. Now, looking at this molecule, this is going to be considered nonpolar. Um, and the question then becomes why? Well, let's first define nonpolar molecule, and then we'll look back and talk a little bit about why it's classified as that. So, a nonpolar molecule. Okay, it's going to be a molecule in, with an equal distribution of charge. And so you might be asking, well, I see all the positive lying to the center of this. How is this an equal distribution of charge? Well, uh, it, it's kind of hard to see, and again, in chemistry, what's make, what makes it kind of challenging is that we're always envisioning these things in two dimensions when really they're three dimensions, but the easiest way for me to recognize that the charge is distributed equally is to think about this molecule like a seesaw. So if you've ever been on a seesaw or a teeter-totter, I don't know what they call it these days, um, if you've ever been on that, right, they have to be balanced on the outside in order for it to stay balanced. So if you notice, our charge, our negative charge, is distributed equally onto the left-hand side and the right-hand side. And so this is going to be considered an equal distribution of charge. Okay, an equal distribution of charge. And so that's the difference between a polar and a nonpolar molecule. Now, here's where things get a little bit tricky, just in the sense of vocabulary. So we've now learned about polar and nonpolar bonds, and we've also learned about polar and nonpolar molecules. But is it possible to have a nonpolar molecule that contains polar bonds? Right? So it can get a little bit tricky. But I want us to use the CO2 as an example here, and we'll go back and look at H2O2. But within CO2, I want to know, does it have polar or nonpolar bonds? Okay, so are the bonds polar or nonpolar? And again, in order to figure that out, that's based on the electronegativity. So O is a 3.4 and C is a 2.6. So my bond is unequal right? They share those electrons unequally, so my bonds are considered polar. However, the molecule, is my molecule considered polar or nonpolar? Okay, and again, if you look at the molecule overall, is my charge distributed equally or is it not equally? And uh, we discussed its equal distribution, which means that this is a nonpolar molecule overall. So it is possible to have polar bonds in a nonpolar molecule, okay? Now let's take a quick look at water and kind of complete that same process. So again, with our bonds, 
Okay, are our bonds considered polar or nonpolar? Well, again, O is a 3.4, H is a 2.2, which means that our bonds are in fact polar. And looking at the overall distribution of charge on the molecule, is that considered polar or nonpolar? Well, again, it's unequal overall, which means it is a polar molecule. Okay? So, where does this take us or how does this relate back to this homogeneous and heterogeneous well we're we're going to get there shortly but before we do that some of you guys might be scratching your head and thinking how did she just figure out all of this bond polarity and how can we figure out the molecule polarity overall really quickly so what i want to do is i want to sketch out three molecules and i want us to kind of um just go through and practice and see if we can figure out how to determine the molecule polarity or and or figure out bond and molecule polarity for them all and then i'll teach you the trick and then we'll go back and we'll talk about um why things mix and why things don't so really quickly here Let's draw the following three molecules, NH3, okay, N2, and CH4. And if you need to take a moment here and, and pause and practice drawing on your own, please do so. If you feel really comfortable with drawing and you understand that process, feel free to follow along here. So N has five valence electrons. It has one lone pair. So when we draw its molecule, it's always going to have the lone pair and it's going to attach itself to the three hydrogens, okay? And two is going to have the lone pair still and three bonding pairs of electrons. And CH4, C starts with no lone pairs, and it's going to have the four H's attached here to form the molecule. Now let's first start with bond polarity, determining if the bonds are polar or nonpolar. So for bond polarity, we do need to take a look here at whether or not they have um, the uh, unequal distribution, or I'm sorry, the unequal sharing of electrons based on the electronegativity values. So H is a 2.2, N is a 3.0, N is a 3.0, N is a 3.0, H is a 2.2 and C is a 2.6. So if we're looking at these here, okay, I want us to go through and determine if that bond is considered polar or nonpolar. So do they share unequally or equally? It's going to be unequally, therefore the bonds in this are polar. For N2, they share equally, so our bond is nonpolar. And for CH4, they are going to be considered polar right? They are not sharing equally. Now let's go through and draw in all of our dipole moments. That'll help us figure out the overall molecule polarity. So H is the partial positive, N is my partial negative, H is partial positive, N is partial negative, H is partial positive, N is partial negative. And notice how we have all of the negative and a pair of electrons lying towards the top of this molecule, which means that our molecule has an unequal distribution of charge and it is considered polar. For N2, we have equal, we have no dipole moment, okay, therefore the molecule is also nonpolar. And for our CH4, let's go through and label our dipoles. Partial positive, partial negative, partial positive, partial negative, partial positive, partial negative, partial positive, and partial negative. Now notice in this one that all of my partial positives are distributed equally around the outside, and therefore this is an equal distribution of charge, and our molecule polarity is considered polar, okay? Or I'm sorry, it's equal distribution, it's nonpolar. Okay, so nonpolar. Let me go ahead and just correct that on here. So this is nonpolar. Okay, so that was really fast. And eventually you're going to get to this position where you're really fast at it. But there is a shortcut method of how you can figure out that molecule polarity really quickly. And so I'm going to go ahead and give that to you right now. And we use a mnemonic device that is SNAP. 
S-N-A-P. And SNAP is going to be talking about the symmetry of our molecule. Okay, and so our SNAP stands for if the molecule is symmetrical, it is considered nonpolar. If it is asymmetrical, then it is considered polar. Now, when I'm talking about symmetry, I know you guys are very talented at symmetry and figuring out like across the X, Y, the Z planes, if it's symmetrical, but it's much more simple in here. So I'm gonna go ahead and just use an, um, use an X here to represent our um, any atom that this is, okay? And when we're talking about symmetry, we're really asking two things. Does the top match the bottom? And does the left match the right, okay? So we're really only talking about symmetry from top to bottom and left to right. Um, and so let's look at a couple of examples of how we can use SNAP to help us figure out the symmetry. So here I have three more molecules, again, H2O, because we already know, we've already talked about this. We've talked about if it's polar or nonpolar, okay? I'm going to give you, so this is water, and this is going to help us kind of explain why things mix and why things don't mix. And then we have rubbing alcohol. Okay. And the chemical formula for that is CH3OH. So we have our carbon that's bonded with hydrogen, 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 oxygen and hydrogen okay and we have our um we have what i'm gonna i'm gonna call it oil it's not the same as oil this is uh, methane but i'm gonna make it simplified for you because it has the same structure in the sense of why it's important to us here so we're gonna just say this is the structure for oil ch4 now let's practice using that snap so again, we are always investigating, does top match bottom, does left match right? So does the top match the bottom? Okay, it does not. Okay, and does the left match the right? It does not. So this did not match, and our top and bottom did not match. And so if we go, if we scroll back up to our mnemonic device here of SNAP, it was considered asymmetrical, which means that the molecular polarity of this is polar. Okay, it is asymmetrical. Okay, for our alcohol, we need to we need to talk about what is our central atom here. We're going to consider carbon the center atom, and so when we ask if it left matches right, we're saying does this H match this OH here? It does not. Okay. Uh, does the top match the bottom, the H and the H? It does. However, since the left does not match the right, this is still considered asymmetrical and therefore it is polar because again, it is asymmetrical. Okay. For oil, we want to ask ourselves, does the left match the right? It does. And does the top match the bottom? It does. And therefore, seeing as it is symmetrical, it is considered nonpolar. Okay? So this is going to be symmetrical and therefore considered nonpolar. Now, notice what our initial question was right, or it's kind of a while ago, I asked that when we mix water and alcohol, they mix together and they form a, heter or a, ho a homogenous mixture, okay, meaning they mix together nicely, and we have oil and water, which form a heterogeneous mixture and they do not mix together and the answer for why that is the case comes back to our polarity in this instance of water and alcohol we are mixing a polar 
molecule with another polar molecule. And with oil and water, we are mixing a nonpolar molecule with a polar molecule. And so we, in order for something to dissolve into something else, they have to have the same molecular polarity, okay? So in order for something to dissolve something else, they must have the same molecular polarity. So dissolving occurs when molecule polarity is the same. And the phrase that we use to help us remember this and make it easier to remember is like dissolves like. Okay. All right, everybody. I know that was lengthy. Thank you for bearing with me. We will practice this in class tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.